Hello, welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell, and this is another lesson in our wall framing series. In this lesson, we're going to talk all about blocking. So let's get right into it. Okay, so up till now, we have been through how to build a wall frame, all of its parts, whether it's plates or studs. We talked about rough openings, how to make openings in walls successfully. We've talked about how to connect walls. And all of this happens with specific parts we already know. The problem is when we're building and when we're framing, there's some situations that these parts we've been through already can't solve our problems. We need other parts. And there's a general term we call blocking. When I say blocking, I mean short pieces of lumber that are put into a wall, typically spanning between two vertical studs. And these uh, blocking can be put in edge up or it can be put in face up, depending on what the job is that it needs to do. And these pieces might be put in multiple bays. The first type of blocking is structural blocking. On this model, you can see a lot of studs here. And these studs, uh, the taller they get, the more they will tend to bend in this narrow direction. So a stud is inherently weak in this direction adding blocking in between these two studs will make this stud help keep this stud straight. And if we continue that blocking down the wall, we've created a situation where each stud helps the other stud to stay straight. The whole wall becomes one unit with all of that continuous blocking. We can add that blocking in, whether they are in line with each other and straight, uh, lined up in one plane or one line, or they can be staggered like in the presentation. The benefit to the staggered structural blocking is we're able to end nail each piece very quickly in the field. This adds to productivity and we can get a much more solid connection to our blocking. You'll see either type in the field. I should say that for structural blocking especially, they should fit into the bays nice and tightly. They shouldn't be loose or too big. If they're too big, they're going to push the stud out of the way. That can cause us problems with dimensions of the wall. As well, if they're too uh, small, you get a loose fit or it will pull the stud in. So for a nice, strong wall, blocking needs to fit well. Fire code also gives us rules for blocking. If you have a stud bay that is taller than 10 feet, then blocking is required. The purpose of blocking to meet fire code is so that we can limit the amount of chimney effect that happens in this bay. If we were to have a fire, this becomes a chimney or a situation where the fire will spread rapidly if this is too tall. So we're trying to limit this space. The blocking that is put in with its face up will limit the airflow through this bay. And that has to happen uh, at a minimum of every 10 feet. So given that rule, it stands to reason that if I have a two by six wall here, my blocking needs to be two by six so that it seals this space in between. If I have a two by four wall, I'd use a two by four with the face up to do the same thing. Another use of blocking would be for edge support of materials that we have to add to this house. So if you look at the exterior of the house, this would all be covered typically with sheathing. That would be OSB panels of probably 7 16 or half of an inch. All of those panels would be fastened to these studs, but depending on the uh, on center spacing of the studs and, the, and some other considerations, if we have any joints that run horizontally, we might have to add support for that edge because it needs to be nailed according to code. And those edges will require blocking. Let's take a closer look at that on my mini wall model here. So I have a wall, you see my studs. We'll use this cardboard as my sheathing. And this would be the outside of the wall. I have sheathing in place. I'm going to put another piece here and I have two edges that need to be fastened. This is where my blocking would come in. So you might see blocking placed here like this with the face up. This would provide adequate support for these edges as long as it was nailed according to the intervals that code stated. But you 
more likely would see a block placed this way. And it might even be a two by six block. As you can see, I have a lot more nailing surface. That's number one. Number two, it offers me this open bay situation that I can insulate. With this board turned this way, I've created a thermal bridge. I have heat transfer through here and I cannot insulate continuously. This allows for that, uh, that continuous insulation situation, which is more energy efficient. So you not only get the better nailing, but you also get this cavity. A way to get around this need for blocking is to put your sheathing panels vertically. If, if the sheathing travels from one stud to the other, then I do not have any edges that need to be fastened. So this is one of those things where blocking is only used where it's needed. It's called out for edge support. We don't need it in this situation. In an ideal world, we would run all of our sheathing panels vertically and avoid all of this edge support and the blocking needed for it. That cuts down on a lot of work. The reality in today's world is that we have uh, OSB sheets at $65 a piece, probably not coming down anytime soon. And we have a house that's not a simple shape. We might need to do this to maximize not only our materials, but to cover the house properly. Remember, we need uh, OSB on 100% of the exterior of the house and the roof. So think of edge support blocking as a way to maximize your materials, save time, and solve these problems of a complex shape. Our support blocking is not only for exterior sheathing. You might see blocking put in for other things like heavy cabinets that need support on the inside, maybe in a kitchen or a bathroom. You might see blocking put in for a grab bar to help someone get into a tub or a shower. You would also see support blocking put in in a stairwell for a handrail. That's a very important situation where you would require a lot of strength in that connection to the wall. Drywall alone won't do it and you don't always have a stud in the right place. So you would take a block and if you knew the general area of where that say handrail in a stairwell needed to be, you could place that block in there and be generally in the right place, nail it in, and then later on, after all the drywall came in, finish work's done, someone could put that handrail in, they could hit something solid. This block is connected to both of these studs. It's integral to the wall panel, so you get that support you need. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. So here's an extreme example of blocking used. What you see here is a shower pan that is built. This will be tiled later, it'll be grouted, and it will drain water out. It had to be carried up from the floor level, say uh, 12 or probably 16 inches. And you're seeing here multiple blocks put in to build a solid surface to fasten all of those materials to, to then waterproof them. I'm a little amazed at how many parts are just in this back wall alone. That's probably uh, two, four, six, eight. That's 10 separate blocks that have been cut and placed in this back wall. We're not even considering the sides at this point. The one thing I would say about blocking is, is that it is labor intensive because each block has to be measured and cut and put into place. So if you consider that in this job, I personally would uh, take a different approach to make this happen. There are other ways to build this out, but it is an example of blocking at work. So the framer is not the only one to place blocking in a wall. Some of your systems people that come in, whether it's your plumbers, your electricians, possibly HVAC contractors, will come in and add blocking to help support their systems. You might see a single block put in the wall uh, to support an item that has to travel through that wall that cannot move around. So we know that blocking is good for support. What you see here is an exhaust intake vent for a, uh, a point of use hot water heater. This particular item needs to travel outside of the building and be held in place. We don't have the appliance yet. 
So now it is solid and placed exactly where it needs to be fastened to a block that is supporting it from underneath. It's actually been strapped on. I don't know if you can see that from the photograph, but this won't move. Now we can add our materials like drywall. And then in the finished stages, we'll bring the appliance in, hook it up, and we can guarantee that that exhaust vent has not moved and it's ready for us to use. So we've started into this blocking conversation earlier, if you remember, with our wall connections. So our wall connections, especially our T-wall connections, can be made with what we call ladder blocking. If, if you relate that to our blocking so far, you can see that ladder blocking is just a series of horizontal blocks that are put in at two foot intervals. This gives us, number one, a solid connection to our T-wall. This is an interior T-wall. And it also gives us nailing support for the drywall on the inside corners where we have uh, a situation where we do not have a stud. So you can see from all of these examples, blocking is an important part of our wall framing, whether it is for uh, fire rules to keep the house safe in, in a fire, whether it's for adding strength to a wall for structural blocking, it might be for edge support for sheathing on the outside or material support on the inside of the house. All of this leads to a finished frame house. This stuff happens later on once all the walls come up and they get connected. And this kind of rounds out the whole idea of wall framing. So I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching, following along. I'll see you in the next one.